Where some might see this as a desolate wasteland, I see it as a land of opportunity. Or at least the opportunity to get us some frog lights, because I've not found a treasure room bastion basically anywhere, which means magma cube spawners might be off the table within a certain radius of the center of the nether where my portal is. And instead, we are out here at the basalt delta that I found in the previous episode because I want to set up a nice big frog light farm right here. And in theory, with the the spawns we can get in a basalt delta we might actually do pretty well out of a frog light farm here the only problem is there's a lot of terrain but luckily <laughs> my build style relies quite heavily on basalt and blackstone so what i've done is i've brought along with me an ender chest a bunch of shulker boxes and an efficiency five pickaxe because while we don't have enough for a full tier four beacon to mine basalt instantly you should only need haste one and efficiency five <laughs> you do need efficiency five which is why i expect i will need to repair this pickaxe quite frequently because combining two efficiency four pickaxes to get efficiency five yikes that's a lot of levels but there's a relatively safe land bridge here to get us over to the basalt salt delta and then we're going to start flattening out all the terrain in this area now that does of course mean that we need to get a beacon beam all the way up through the nether roof and i'm also bringing a fire resistance potion with me because oh boy do i not want to get burned in lava lakes like this but our first mission is going to be to get somewhere fairly central to this area i want to say right there where that ravine digs up into the ceiling of the nether you can see my pathway having been brought out here and spiraling down to the location where we're probably going to afk a decent distance away from the area but with enough radius that magma cubes should spawn inside the area of the farm and if we set up a tier 2 beacon here then we should hopefully be able to get haste 1 in a reasonable radius around it a 30 block radius should be enough to help us clear out some of the basalt that's in these larger formations and then honestly if the magma cubes can spawn in an environment like this <laughs> they should be able to spawn there too so let's get our 5x5 five five beacon base built here we'll build a 3x3 three three on top of that we'll throw the beacon down there and then we will pillar up just looking at the amount of magma cubes that are around here though these frogs are going to have a great time one thing we do have to be aware of is that the beacon cannot pass through any blocks of netherrack but that looks like three solid blocks of bedrock above there and i'm hoping that that right there is the height of the nether roof we don't need to break the bedrock at all thankfully once we take down all this netherrack we should have a beacon beam straight through the center and looking at this now i think our afk point might as well be up near the nether roof above the farm because there are so many giant magma cubes down here when i come back down does the beam activate? Yes, we've done it. Okay, now all I should need to do is grab a gold ingot from the nearby surroundings. We can activate the beacon and we can start clearing away some of this basalt. And we're going to do that in the form of a time lapse.
Well, I've been back in the overworld doing a little bit more work since that last time lapse, and now I have, I believe, <laughs> The workforce that's going to be present in the Basalt Delta Magma Cube farm. We've just got a bunch of rails and stuff. We're going to do a bunch of the setup first because, of course, we need these fellas to grow up and we need them to grow up in specific biomes if we're going to be getting all of the different kinds of frog lights. I would also like to get one more just so we have three of each type of frog in the two separate pits that I have dug out there, and I'll explain a bit more about the design in a few minutes. First of all though, and this is already costing me a fortune in buckets, so I'm probably gonna have to break down half of the iron blocks I used for that tier four beacon, but we're gonna have to make ourselves a bunch of buckets and fill up a shulker box with powder snow, because powder snow is of course the key to breaking down the larger magma cubes into their smallest kind so they can get eaten by the frogs. And I believe on the back side of this mountain over here, we have a little miniature Grove biome, which I am hoping has, yep, that looks like powdered snow to me. It sure is. All right, let's grab a bunch of this and let's take it over to the Basalt Delta and I'll recap what I've done so far. So as we round the corner here and deal with some of these skeletons from the Soul Sand Valley, you'll see that we've already got a few magma cubes spawning over here in the flattened area of the Basalt Delta. And we even have a couple of pits dug already, which we can take a closer look at once the skeletons are out of the way. Now these pits may even have a couple of things spawning in them for the moment, yep, which probably won't be the case once the actual farm is up and running, but the idea is that these two pits are spaced out at a diagonal because wow, look at all the magma cube spawns around here, and we're going to fill each of these with a minecart collection mechanism. There's going to be an iron golem over the top of each one, luring the magma cubes in and hopefully not attracting the attention of any of the ghasts. We haven't done a great deal of spawn proofing around here, but the natural terrain of basalt deltas is actually quite tough for magma cubes to regularly spawn in, whereas if you flatten out an area like this, they're going to be a lot more successful in spawning, as you can see. Which means that all we should need to do is AFK somewhere nearby, somewhere within range of this giant platform here, and we'll probably get a bunch of magma cubes spawning here on the surface. We'll get one or two spawning up there in the far reaches of the basalt delta and probably on some of the terrain underneath here, but most of the magma cube spawns are going to be concentrated here just because it's possible for them to survive here. For the minute though, I am going to have to kill some of the magma cubes down here in the pit and probably kill a few of them that are going to jump in after me because I need to get down here and start laying down the minecart tracks that are going to collect all of the frog lights. And let me tell you, without sweeping edge on your sword, this really does take longer than it should. <laughs> Luckily, once we're down here, we're kind of out of range of the remainder of the magma cubes seeing us and we should be able to get to work. My plan is to have a kind of central storage area directly between our two pits where we can keep chests of all of the frog lights and have the minecarts drop off what they have collected. So just off of the edge of this pit, we're going to have a collection area here where the minecart's going to be stopped on that rail to unload all of its contents. The only problem with that is the other pit over here is kind of an artificial one. I had to make it. It was the right sort of distance away from the other pit, but unfortunately there wasn't enough terrain here, so I had to kind of handcraft it myself. Luckily though, it is close enough to this wall that we should be able to set up another collection mechanism over here. I think that might work. Just got to make sure you don't make too much eye contact with the squishy guys beyond the wall. <laughs> We're also either going to have to keep the ceiling low or slab the floor to make sure magma cubes don't spawn in here because they do need above two blocks to spawn. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Nearly two stacks of powered rail need to go into place. Then we need to put a layer of basalt back over all of this, set up a hopper minecart collection system, which, you know, I'm optimistic. We might get a few more frog lights out of this. Close off the wall here so the ghasts can't blow up my redstone and build the same thing on the opposite side. All we need is a redstone stone torch down here that's going to set the minecarts going. We'll have to deal with that another time because I don't have any wood on me right now. But for now, this is also going to stop the minecart from leaving this station, which I'm fine with because it's got nothing to collect yet. I, on the other hand, have so much magma cream. And now I have a second minecart collection system all up and running. Now we just got to cover the floor of this once again with a layer of basalt. And then we have to return to the floor of the pit here so I can do the most important part. Laying down a 5x5 five five grid of powdered snow one block apart that's going to break down the larger magma cubes into to their smaller variants, which was all but two of my buckets of powder snow, so I think we're going to have to go and get some more. But one of the bigger magma cubes has obliged by just casually jumping into the pit, and so hopefully in a minute it's going to start taking some freezing damage and split up into the smaller magma cubes. And they're going to split up into the smallest type of magma cube, and that'll make it nice and easy for me to kill them, but also for the frogs to do that once they're in here. And then with the minecart going, we should be able to collect all of the drops from beneath the floor. Now all that remains is to collect enough powder snow that we can do that to the pit on the 
opposite side, bring in a couple of redstone torches so we can activate the collection minecarts, and find the right biomes that we can grow up our army of frogs. And amazingly, the portal that I set up over here by our basalt delta leads me directly to <laughs> a savanna feels like home at this point. Oh, perfect. There's a village here. What I'm really hoping is that we'll find some sort of cold biome connected to this waterway, and that will hopefully give us an opportunity to bring back a frog from the cold biome. So I need to do a little bit more searching around here, but first I need to set up the remainder of that powder snow. Well, this is not exactly the place I expected to be raising some frogs, <laughs> but then again, very little about this journey has been expected. I've got my leads ready. I've got a fence post to tie them to if I need to, and we've got a boat in case we need that. Let's, uh, let's raise some frogs. Well, that's the longest part of that over and done with. Two of the frogs already went through to the nether because I tied them up too close to the portal, but the remaining four are out here. And thankfully, all I should need to do is raise a couple more tadpoles in this biome and one of the adjoining more temperate biomes with forests and plains and stuff adjacent to the savannah that's not too far away. I could probably do it in a river, to be honest with you, and that would be perfectly fine. And then we should have all three varieties of frogs. We'll have six of each, we'll have three of each in the pits in the nether, and they should start producing frog lights for us. I'm going to do a quick test of that, though. I'm going to bring at least one more frog through to the nether so that we can make sure that the system at least works, and that it is safe to bring these little guys over to the pits where they're going to be living, because there's a lot of magma cubes around. They won't attack the frogs, but I want to at least make sure that I can get them safely across this narrow bridge because this is fine for player transport but for frog transport we need to make sure that we're in the clear here although we might be about to get our first taste of frog lights because as soon as i bring this little guy into the radius of these magma cubes he's gonna want a taste <laughs> Yeah, there we go. There's our first verdant frog light of the series. Fantastic. And let's see if he wants to hop down into the pit where there's a lot of tiny magma cubes waiting for him. I've got to make sure I detach him from the lead before I nudge him into the pit. Otherwise, he might end up dangling down there and take a little extra full damage. But no, frogs are just fine. And look at that. He's there surrounded by his favorite food in hell, but somehow also in paradise. And I did craft myself a couple of trap doors just so that we could make a proper ladder down to the collection area for this place. And let's see if we can start up this hopper minecart and get the whole system working. In theory, all it should take is a redstone torch here and the minecart is off on its journey. Let's hope that it unloads here successfully. Looks like that is working. The whole thing is unloading a bunch of verdant frog lights. And once that's done, Yes, the minecart is off on its journey again. 27 verdant frog lights already? Oh my goodness. We're up to half a stack, basically, and I haven't even started. Now I'm going to need to make a lever so that we can disable these when we're not using the farm, just so the minecarts don't get stuck when the chunks unload. But aside from that... This is, this is working out incredibly well. And with teams of frogs working inside of here and an iron golem to lure the magma cubes into this spot, it's going to be very, very productive. It seems like it's safe to bring these other two frogs across, but I'm going to... Whoa, hello. This is what I did not want to happen, though, so we do need to make sure that we're safe from ghast attacks and other magma cubes while we do this. One of our frogs is up here, at least, and I'm going to leave him eating those magma cubes while I find out what's happened to the other one. Oh, no, he's down there. We do not want them to go down here. Oh no. Oh no. He's going after one of the other magma cubes. Oh help. Oh, he's in the basalt delta now. I don't want him to go in the lava. Please don't take damage on the magma blocks. I need you alive for this farm. Listen, buddy, you're a loose cannon and I appreciate that about you. <laughs> you're going to be a good worker in the farm, but oh my goodness. Thankfully, we can just follow the trail of frog light blocks to get back to the other one. <laughs> oh my days. He has made short work of those magma cubes. And that's really why I'm not bothering with more than three of each kind of frog in each of these pits. It's going to be more than enough. But just just look at the devastation that they leave in their wake. All right, we have proof that that's all going to work out for us. <laughs> Let's head back to the overworld and breed up the other frogs. So one squad of frogs is already moved in, and here we have squad number two. We got three of each type, and I even came away with a few extra tadpoles, thanks to the fact that I just bred some around here in the meantime. And I think it's probably time to get this lot set up as well. I need a lot of leads, but thankfully a wandering trader came by, so I have a couple extra. The most difficult part is making sure that they all stay together 
and making sure that they'll all come through to the nether at the same time, but I think we have all nine of them. Let's try and get all of them through to the nether at once. <laughs> They're going through one by one. It's taking a second, but there we go. The last one is through. The leads are popping back through as well. Let's see if we can catch them on the other side. Looks like they all made it. Looks like they're all relatively chill for now. There's our last green one and the three white ones as well. Perfect. All right. Now let's see if we can drag all of them across to the other pit that's on the other side of this giant field of magma cubes. We're going to have to take it slowly. I'm a little bit worried about this part. It's kind of narrow on this bridge, but it looks like they've all made it. Fantastic. And it looks like we're just going to be leaving a trail of frog lights as we go here because each one of these is going to want to eat the small magma cubes as they pass. Oh, looks like we've lost one of the orange ones. Okay, quick rescue mission. <laughs> Gonna have to pull some of the others down for this, and oh, I do not want ghasts on me right now. There we go, here they come. <laughs> the squad is on its way, and like I said, they're just leaving frog lights in their wake. This is glorious. I'm actually gonna have them eat all of the little magma cubes in this area, because otherwise they'll just want to chase them down anyway, and it becomes even harder to nudge them into the pit. There we go, <laughs> we got all of the frog lights just by picking them up from these little frogs. The automatic frog light farm is almost done, but to be honest, I would farm frog lights like this if I needed to, because this is really quite fun. Into the pit they go, one by one. No, my frogs! <sighs> Dang it, ghasts. Okay, it looks like we got two of each in there, but unfortunately we ended up losing three of them. Honestly, though, I get the feeling that two of each of them will probably be enough. I think it will be enough to keep up with the amount of magma cubes that end up down there, at least for now. At least I'm hoping it will be, because <laughs> the green frogs are really difficult to move. Anyway, the minecart has been sent on its way. We should hopefully have a setup that will unload the minecart automatically over here, and let's see how many frog lights we end up with from that first pass. I'll throw these ones in here as well. Yep, looks like the stopping mechanism is working just fine, and we've got a couple of blocks of netherrack, but we we have some coming through. The farm on the other side should have been working as well. I've added a second chest down here. Look at that. So we've got over a stack of verdant frog lights, a stack and a half. We've got some of the pearlescent and ochre ones starting to build up as well. This is good. Now, the final touch we need is some iron golems to lure the magma cubes in over the pits. And that's kind of why I have two of these pits, because over such a wide area, it's inevitable that some magma cubes are going to spawn further away, and I didn't want to do too much spawn proofing. So I think these two are a good distance apart that one iron golem here or one iron golem there is going to attract these magma cubes in as they wander around. So as long as we put them towards the center of the farm, it's probably going to be okay to have the golems only a block or two up. I'm thinking here is going to be a good spot for them. We'll eliminate this bridge just to make sure the uh, magma cubes don't follow us over. I'm going to build a fence around like this, but I think that'll actually stop me spawning in an iron golem since the fences will connect to the iron blocks. Right now, most of the magma cubes are going to pathfind in towards me, so that shouldn't be too bad. In the meantime, I think we should be able to do this and then very quickly fence it off. Perfect. Okay, the iron golem is in, and I don't think he'll be able to move anywhere. I don't think the magma cubes will be able to jump far enough to reach him either. And if we want this place to be a lot more optimized, all we need to do is spawn proof the area outside of the radius where magma cubes would start pathfinding towards that golem. And once they've split up into the smaller magma cubes, these farms are going to be producing enough frog lights that I'm not that worried about the efficiency. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to set up an iron golem over here, quickly fence him off to make sure he doesn't start pathfinding towards the little magma cubes, and he's in. And I think we'll probably expand this platform on this side so that we get more spawns over here since we're wasting the amount of space that we could be using to attract more magma cubes in. But if we fly away and come back, so we reset the aggro on some of these other magma cubes and maybe reset spawns in the area as well, let's see how many cubes we've got going. Yep, those ones over there are already tracking in towards the iron golem. Even from the edge of that platform, they shouldn't be able to reach him, and once the powder snow starts working on them, they'll take damage that's going to disrupt some of their jump height anyway. The ones over here are also moving in, and you'll see these ones around the edges, they're bound around, they're not quite noticing the iron golem yet, but if they happen to go in the right direction, then they will. See, they're making their way in towards the golem now. That's working pretty well. All I've got to do is head down there to see how many frog lights we're getting and make sure that the minecarts are running effectively. Yep, looks like that one's still going, and with any luck, this one should still be going as well. Yes, it is. Okay, minecarts are pretty effective. Like, lately, they've been better about 
maintaining their momentum when they unload and reload. And oh, the frog lights are rolling in. This is very, very good. I might even be able to set up an AFK point below this farm, and that will probably work out better in terms of terrain because I'll be loading a bunch of area that is too close to me for the magma cubes to spawn in. So hopefully they should end up spawning mostly on this top level. Oh, the other thing I'll need to spawn proof is the soul sand valley areas around here because there's a couple of skeletons that are trying to shoot at my iron golems. I did bring a bit of extra iron so that I could patch them up if they needed it, but man, <laughs> we don't want to lose one of these guys. So I think we will have to lose the soul sand valley patches of terrain that are over here. Wow, look at this place. Hello, welcome Hi. to Dawn. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fantastic, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Lovely trek over, I love this mountain range so much, it's very pretty. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It gives us great natural protection, although it's a bit difficult to get around, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine, I had fun following <laughs> the road. Um, I saw you were doing ah, some- good, good. I saw you were doing some villager trading. Mm -hmm. I have some other stuff to trade for you. Uh, <laughs> trading? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Well, this is great news because I've just started setting up a couple of resources here. I've Ooh. got uh, carrots and potatoes, but also in the barn over here, I've got honeycomb, if you'd be interested. Honeycomb is absolutely what I'm after, yes. And in exchange, I have Perfect. brought a box of frog lights. Uh, so if, I don't know if Whoa. any of those <laughs> suit your, your build style or anything you want to be doing, but... Uh, These are so cool. Yeah, yeah, fresh from the uh, Basalt Delta. That's <laughs> about a thousand blocks away in the nether. It, it's uh, a little hectic, but it's it's going That's very, insane. very well. I've not even been in there. Okay, well, you tell me how much honeycomb you want. There, It's over here, right up here. Uh-huh. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Um, I'm thinking maybe like two stacks of honeycomb per stack of frog lights. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that sounds super reasonable. Awesome. These things are pretty easy to farm once you get it going, but <laughs> it was a lot of effort to get it's it set up in the going. first place. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, yeah, if I just grab how, ma how many um, stacks of frog lights? Maybe like two to start with, so I can take maybe like four stacks yeah, of honeycomb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. That sounds good to me. Yeah, perfect. You no. can take an extra one if you need as well. It's pretty easy to get. Oh yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, I, I have plans to make various things with this, but yeah, copper, candles, all that kind of stuff is uh -huh. uh, definitely on the horizon, I think. So, so yeah, um, <laughs> I will have to do a bit more AFKing to see if I can stock up on these, but uh, anytime you need some more, you just let me know. I will. These are fantastic. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> they look really good around here, actually. They seem to, they have this kind of really nice, soft, sunshiny glow to them. It does. It's perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, no worries. All right, uh, I better get going because uh, these things aren't going to sell themselves and a lot of people are interested. So I got some of hiking course. to do. Of course. Off you go, traveler. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, thank God. Oh. Hello? <laughs> Oh. Uh, Sheriff. There Hi. he is. Hi. Uh, ne next time when you want to choose a meeting location, maybe make it somewhere other than the center of the earth. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. It's, um, it's taken me so long to find I'm, you. I'm so sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. But oh my god. It's going to be worth it, Pigs, because... I, <laughs> Sheriff, <laughs> what, what have you found? So... I was I was minding my own business, mining away, collecting diamonds, um, having a great time. When I came across this, yeah, and uh, it's some sort of fossil type thing. It's it's an absolute beast, and it was infested, infested with diamonds. And I thought, I, I, I gotta take them. Obviously, you, you... Uh, I've got fancy new diamond gear now. Um, so I took away all the diamonds, and then I was going to take it for bone meal, but then everyone shouted at me. So <laughs> I thought, let's, let's meet up with Lawman and see what he thinks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, bone meal can be farmed, first of all, Jimmy. So <laughs> don't, even though so it's... So you don't think... It's, it's... Don't... 
it's tempting. Don't don't take this for bone meal. Like, sorry, 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 sorry. Not not to, not to get all Indiana Jones on you, but it, this does belong in a museum. Like I would have killed to have one of these like legitimately generated in my museum. The fact that you've taken the diamonds out of it is kind of heartbreaking, to be honest with you. No, I mean, don't say that. Like I mean, wait, am I cursed? G Jimmy, am I you, you might need to you might need to see a witch about hexes just in case just in case right we've got a witch on the server so you're, you're probably yeah. you're probably gonna be fine as long as you go and see her but like there's there's oh, di gosh. there's diamonds in the walls Jimmy like you, you could have taken them out of the walls I've I found about six just on my way over here looking for you in these <laughs> giant caves oh. so um yeah the fact that you remove the diamonds from this might be a problem however um, mm -hmm. I, I think for the sake of, you know, history and posterity and stuff, we had better try and preserve this in, like, you know, a glass box at least or something. Like, let me, mm -hmm. let me throw down. I have some supplies. <laughs> I brought my preservation kit just so that Ooh. we can, um, we can, Ooh. we can make like a proper case for it and everything. And you know I what? Like that. Um, if you can remember where you took the diamonds out... I have a few spare deep slate ores that we can probably just put back, and I'm thinking that we we want to try and preserve it as as pristine as it initially was, and then hopefully okay. whatever primeval forces are manifest in this place will not get very mad at you and want to claim your soul. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, did you want to throw me the diamond the diamonds and I'll put them back where they where I found them? Uh, if if you can... <laughs> you're a man of your word, Jimmy. If nothing else, so I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna um... I'm gonna trust you to do that. Uh, <laughs> See you later, bud. See you so I'm joking. I'm the law. I'm the law. I'm the law. Right, I'm the law. Right, right. It's fine. It's okay. You're the law. I'm the law. We're all the law. Yes. Right. Let me. Uh, Joel especially is is the law. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna whip up a couple of things just so you know how like in museums they'll have they'll have little presentation cases for stuff and they're usually yeah. pr pretty fancy looking with like a plaque on the front and stuff. That's what I'm thinking we do with this. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. So so I'm gonna make a little um a little display stand for it and uh, we can put like a we can put a nameplate on it to say that you found it here and everything this was discovered by, yes by the sheriff yeah, 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 yeah. and maybe yeah. the date no, i and need stuff. credit i need credit absolutely yeah yeah if you're the one who looted the diamonds from it in the first place then you're the one who gets no. to you get to or take maybe the credit. we don't say that part in the, maybe, maybe you know not. if this like yeah if this like goes on to be in like a huge discovery because i don't really know how big this is um then maybe we just leave that part out yeah and we may just know that part we'll we'll see we'll see how history usually decides the victors so i think we'll <laughs> we'll see how that works oh. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think that was it, by the way. I yeah. think. Yeah, no, it looks about uh, right from what I saw. Maybe there was one connecting the spine, like next to where that other piece was, because I remember there being. Oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I saw this happening live, and I remember there yeah. being like two there. So that's probably it. Maybe one here as well. I reckon yeah, that's. This bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think yeah. that's. That's more or less it. That's roughly what these things typically look like anyway. And to be honest, yeah. I have never seen one with diamonds in. That's really why I wanted you to preserve it in the first place is because like I've seen ones with coal, but I had to go and dig under a desert. You know, they only spawn under two biomes, which is like deserts oh. and swamps. And so like you being basically the sheriff of the desert, like you're very, very lucky to have had one of these basically in your backyard the whole time. Yeah, this is, yeah, I'd never ever ever seen one of these before so yeah i was i was gobsmacked I'm not yeah yeah lie. It yeah looks good i mean oh, you'll like you'll find bone structures like this in you know soul sand valleys and stuff but they're everywhere i do think yeah, yeah, i do yeah. think having one with diamonds in though is just like it's something special man it's something else yeah what are you thinking are you thinking putting glass around it yeah i've got some glass there in the uh the little white shulker box so i'm gonna i'm gonna put some stairs around the outside so it's got this nice like beveled edge to it like a nice. prop, like a proper display case. But if you want to start putting glass around the outside, yeah, yeah, yeah then I yeah. can just put um, a, put a border on it after that. I think. Or do you want me to get rid of the deep slate? I would then, like... I would like to, but I don't know if I have enough glass for that. So if it just like you know, if we boxes just make a it, wall of it like this, yeah, boxes yeah, like it into the cave in. wall. I like that idea. We'll have enough at least for like the front wall of this, and then I can I can always come back with more if I need to, right? Yeah. But yeah, back when I was building the museum, I was rebuilding a bunch of the structures that you find around the world. I didn't ever get to build a fossil in the end. I just didn't didn't get Ooh. around to it. Oh my gosh, look at this. Like if, if if you step back and take a look at this now, does it look like a proper proper museum yeah, it looks exhibit? Like a proper case like Do you know what? I just, I'm just a little bit proud that me me. I know I'm the sheriff and that's pretty important, but me, I found this. And yes, I may have meddled with it a little bit at the start but i've now gone back on myself reevaluated, and we've produced 
history right yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, th this is going to be here for a, for a good while. I might make the display stand a little bit thicker. It just looks a little bit weedy right now. But it um, looks great, though. I, I tell think you it what, looks great. Do you, do you want to sign your work? I'll give you a couple of signs. Do you want to <gasps> yes, just yes, yes. like put those on Let the front of the on the front of the gold blocks and uh, you know s sign it's it and found say, by the sheriff, found by the sheriff, at, and, and maybe oh gosh, maybe the date or something as well. It'd be fun. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, this is this is what historical preservation is all about. It's it's uh, more fun than you'd you'd expect. <laughs> and wait, I mean, <laughs> yeah, what, what year is year it in the future <laughs> yeah. three thousand and seven hundred <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's supposed to be however many years after season one so yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> found by the sheriff date the 6th of july 2022 there it is just under my own tumble town well it's not directly under me but it's very close it's got to be in like we're in a desert biome right here so it's the desert yeah. literally like right next door to your mesa yeah dude i it looks amazing it looks so good yeah, I mean, uh, we oh, need... I'm so happy with that. We need to create some sort of like access thing down here because you've lit up the cave, so it's not all that dangerous. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool for people to come and see the fossil that the yeah! she the sheriff the has fossil! found. Yeah, yeah. Wait, could I wait? Could I get people to pay me to come? See I mean, the honestly, like people people donate, people pay admission to museums and exhibits and stuff like that all the time. Yeah, so I reckon you'll. You uh, might... To be fair, I know I found it, but I'll leave that to you. If you want to get people. Doing admissions to the... Because this is you, you know? This is the history, <laughs> the the preservation. This is all you. I'm just glad to be taking a part of finding it. Yeah, like we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Maybe we can open it up to the public in a little while. Yes. But uh, I'll, I'll definitely the I'll definitely make like sure that. to seal it off first, just in case anybody else decides to nick the diamonds out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nicking the diamonds again. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I like yeah. that. Right. Well, um... Yeah, I'm gonna try get back home now. Yeah, and same. Good luck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got three fireworks left, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fly out here or if I'll just have to peel her up I, and well, you, dig to you the can surface. Definitely get some height. Definitely get some height. Like, there's a gap right up there. Oh yeah, so no, I, I, probably... I see it. I see it. I can manage. You can try fly out. I'll follow the torches, and hopefully that means that you came this way. <laughs> Uh, I don't. E to be fair, I don't even know how I got out last time. This seems like one of those caves that you just give up and dig up to the surface from after a while, right? It was. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent was. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a That's mine shaft up there at least, so I might be able to fly up to that and see how it looks from there. All right. Well, uh, I'll I'll probably come by with some more glass a bit later to finish this off. But um, yeah, uh, howdy, sheriff. <laughs> Good to howdy. see you finally. Howdy, yeehaw! <laughs> I'll see you soon. Yeah. Take it easy. Well, it has been a productive day, not just for me, but also for our new frog light farm. I have topped up my frog light sales box, and we also have a backup box that is basically full of frog lights from spending another hour and a half over by that farm, doing a bit of spawn proofing and making sure that some of the area is all slabbed off, but that's going to work out splendidly. I've already had a couple of people say that they want some frog lights. I traded with Jem earlier, but I think Scott and a few other folks wanted some frog lights as well, so I'm certain that we'll be able to do a few more trades and consider that my empire's first real export. Even though my empire is old and crumbling at this point, it's not really my empire, I guess, and I'm really just here to fill in the gaps of what other people might want to trade but nobody has already claimed as a resource. Before we go I might as well briefly show you what I've done to make access to the farm a little bit easier because I figured it was probably going to be a good idea to get over there without having to use rockets all the time since Jimmy still hasn't set up a gunpowder farm and I don't really want to be going and hunting creepers all of the time. So despite the fact that the hoglins and piglins are still walking on it I have started to set up a nice easy ice boat road out to that area in the basalt delta. So all I need to do is hop in my boat. We've got a packed ice trail here that's going to take me all the way down here past the piglins that have spawned and we're going to throw wooden buttons on all of this so that we don't end up with stuff spawning on the tracks as I row down here. But that's going to take us all the way to the end of the corridor. We're going to hit a nice easy right turn after this soul sand valley. It's coming up there it is and there we go. We can take the corner at about 50 miles an hour and we end up coming out over the soul sand valley and basalt delta combo where down there our magma cube farm has been undergoing a bit of spawn proofing i didn't want to slab absolutely everything but i don't need to because the cubes should just be happily bouncing into there from these areas around the outside and i think we're probably going to put a wall around this to stop them from bouncing outside of the radius of the farm but they'll eventually make their way back in and in the meantime of course 
our frogs are happily producing frog lights. But for now, we'll bid this farm farewell because I don't expect I'll need to come back here, at least on camera, for a good while. With the amount of frog lights we have, I think we'll be set for the foreseeable future. But for now, folks, that is going to be it for this episode from Empire's SMP. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you'll have a safe and pleasant week. Uh oh yikes. Uh, <laughs> that's, my outro got interrupted by a, a, a hoglin on the tracks. Okay, well, uh, hopefully we took care of him, and ooh, got a hoglin head out of that as well. I like it. But back in the overworld, I have a lot of stone gathering to do, because next episode, we're probably going to be attempting one of the biggest builds I've ever done. And yes, I mean ever. Stay tuned for that, folks. But for now, thank you so much for watching this episode of Empire's SMP. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.